Greetings, motherfuckers! Ich bin Sam, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about Germany. Germany has a rich history and vibrant culture. It's had good times, it's had some really not so good times, and also just all right times. But what is Germany's most hilariously named mountain? Why do German children receive a large cone on their first day of school? And is German grammar an invention of Satan sent to torment English school children? I mean, I did French, but I heard how bad German was because the kids were all crying. Two out of three of these questions are going to be answered, so slip on your lederhose and approach everything in your life with a cold, humorless efficiency, and prepare yourself for further stereotyping as we take you through 101 facts about Germany. Number one. Germany, officially known as the Federal Republic of Germany, is unsurprisingly, given its name, a federal parliamentary republic in central western Europe, comprising 16 constituent states. The Germans call Germany Deutschland, because they have many mysterious ways. Number 2. Germany covers an area of roughly 357,000 square kilometres, making it the sixth largest country in Europe. Germany also has a largely temperate seasonal climate. So the next time someone asks you about the climate of Germany, which they're definitely going to do, you can say with some confidence that it's largely temperate. You're welcome. Number 3. Around one third of Germany is covered in forests and woodlands, making it the perfect place to build a house made entirely of confectionery in a remote, isolated location, which can then be used to lure small children to a grim cannibalistic fate, or, you know, just go hiking. Number 4. Speaking of forests, Germany is home to the Schwarzwald, known in English as the Black Forest, which is a large forested mountain range in southwestern Germany that is roughly rectangular in shape. This name was first used by Roman soldiers, who called it Silver Nigra, which literally means Black Forest, owing to the dark quality of the densely packed woodland. <laughs> Number 5. The highest mountain in Germany is the Zugspitze, and is the highest peak of the Wetterstein mountain range right at the very south of Germany. The Zugspitze stands proudly at 9,717 feet tall. Number 6. Germany shares its alluringly curvy borders with nine other countries, the Tart. These are Denmark, Poland, the Czech Republic, Austria, Switzerland, France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. Boy, Germany gets around. Number 7. With a population somewhere in the region of 82 million, Germany is, by a fairly wide margin, the most populated member state of the European Union. Second place goes to France, with a puny 67 million people. Pfft, go home, France, you're a joke. Number 8. Sadly, however, Germany's population is declining. Mm. In the last decade, the country's population has fallen by 2 million people. Some experts say that by 2060, the German population could shrink by almost 20% down to 66 million. Number 9. The population decline was so extreme that between 1989 to 2009, roughly 2,000 German schools were closed due to there simply not being enough German children. Well, there's only one solution, Germany. Time to treat baby making the way you treat engineering and industry, with cold, ruthless efficiency. Number 10. Still, it's not all doom and gloom in Deutschland. After the United States, Germany is the second most popular immigration destination in the entire world. Number 11. Number. Oh, just did it. Ha. Germany's largest city is beautiful Berlin, which has also been the capital since 1990. But other German cities are available, such as Frankfurt, Dusseldorf, Hamburg, Munich, Stuttgart, Dresden, Hanover, and Nuremberg, to name but a few. Number 12. Germany has its origins in the various Germanic tribes that inhabited the northern areas of what is now Germany since classical antiquity. The word Germany dates all the way back to the times of Julius Caesar, who referred to the lands east of the Rhine River as Germania. That was just before he was stabbed to death by all his mates, by the way. Number 13. That being said, Germany is known by numerous other names, depending on who you're talking to. Some people, such as the Spanish or French, take inspiration from the Germanic Alemanni tribe and refer to Germany as Alemannia, or Alemania, respectively. Italians use the original Latin name Germania, but confusingly refer to the German language as Tedesco. Scandinavians call Germany Teiskland, the Polish call it Niemse, and the Finnish use Saxa. Only the British correctly say Germany. Number 14. During the 16th century, northern German regions emerged as the centre of the Protestant Reformation, in which reformers broke away from the Catholic Church for being super corrupt and whatnot. That's right, Germany's not here for your shenanigans, Catholicism. Number 15. After the Holy Roman Empire ended, the German Confederation was formed in 1815, 
This loose political association of 39 states was created by the Congress of Vienna to coordinate and ensure peace among German-speaking areas. However, most modern historians view the German Confederation as ineffective and weak. Mind your own business, historians. Number 16. Germany managed to get its SHI, you can finish the rest, together and become a proper country for the first time in 1871, with what is now called the Unification of Germany, creating the German Empire. However, after World War I came the November Revolution of 1918, which replaced the empire with the parliamentary Weimar Republic. Number 17. One of the few fun facts about the German Empire, and believe me, I've looked for others, was that in 1916 it allowed citizens to take passport photos with their dogs. Nowadays, they don't even let you smile. Mm. Number 18. Following World War I, there were so few men left in Germany that only a third of women could find themselves a husband. Yep, it's hard out there for women, especially when potential husbands keep getting themselves blown up to smithereens in wars. <laughs> men, what are they like, eh? Number 19. Speaking of World War I, Germany only just made its final reparations payments from the Treaty of Versailles in 2010. Ugh, we've all got a friend like Germany. If you think you haven't, you're Germany. Number 20. Germany experienced serious economic hardship following the First World War. Germany's hyperinflation peaked in 1923, at which point a loaf of bread cost almost 430 billion marks. You may not have even been able to butter that bread either, because a kilo of butter costs roughly 6 trillion marks. Number 21. Like every country, Germany has its quirks. One of which is its love for actor and occasional singer David Hasselhoff. While the Hoff's popularity in most of the West has fluctuated, he has remained fairly well loved in Germany and Austria, to the point that it's actually become like a thing. Hasselhoff's debut musical album, Night Rocker, charted in Austria and Germany but nowhere else, and he even appeared on the German version of Celebrity Big Brother. Number 22. <laughs> The most popular German surname, known in Germany as a nachname, is Müller. Now you know. Now you know the truth. Number 23. Possibly the world's most famous scientist was a German by the name of Albert Einstein. You may have heard of him. Einstein spent his later years in the United States, and on his deathbed spoke his last words in German, which the non-German nurse did not speak. As such, the final words of the most iconic scientist in human history were lost forever. Number 24. Germans apparently love to be nudie. The world's first large-scale nudist park was opened in Hamburg in 1903 by Paul Zimmermann. And according to the German Association for Free Body Culture, one in ten Germans take a specifically naked holiday every year. There's no relatable joke I can make here without revealing deeply embarrassing truths about my own body, so let's just move on, shall we? Number 25. The soft drink Fanta originated in Germany during the Second World War. Because Germany was prevented from importing the ingredients required to make Coca-Cola, what with that, you know, WW2 going on, the head of Coca-Cola in Germany decided to create a new soft drink with stuff they could actually get their hands on, which led to the creation of Fanta. Thanks, trade embargoes. Number 26. Fanta is so popular in Germany that people actually bake it into a popular dessert called Fanta Kuen, which literally means Fanta cake. I prefer my personal variant, Dr. Pepper Express cake. I don't know what the express bit is. Number 27. As a result of World War II, approximately 5,500 bombs from that period are discovered and diffused in Germany every year. This works out to an average of 15 unexploded World War II bombs every single day, which is too many unexploded World War II bombs for my liking. Number 28. Following World War II and a period of occupation by the Allies, Germany was split into two very creatively titled nations, the Democratic West Germany and the Socialist East Germany. I feel like they missed the opportunity to name themselves something completely new and off the wall. You know, something like, um, we West Germany. God, okay, that's harder than it looks. Number 29. This period of German division ended in 1989 with the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the country was reunified on the 3rd of October 1990, creating the Germany we know and love today. In fact, the 3rd of October is now celebrated as German Unity Day. Number 30. Germany is often referred to as the land of poets and thinkers, or in German, das Land der Dichter und Denker, owing to the large number of artists, musicians, writers and academics that the country has produced. Famously talented Germans include musicians like Bach and Beethoven, writers like Goethe, and the iconic philosophical minds such as Kant, I said Kant, YouTube algorithm, Hegel, Schopenhauer, and Nietzsche. Number 31. Germany can also lay claim to some of the world's most famous and useful inventions. Germans have helped develop a number of important technologies over the years, such as automated calculators, automobiles, pocket watches, jet engines, LCD screens, and the Walkman. Haha, <laughs> thanks Germany. Number 32. 
Funnily enough, the game of Chinese checkers is not Chinese at all. The game was invented in, yep, that's right, Germany, in 1892 and was originally called Stern Halma. This comes from it being a variation on the game Halma, which was invented a few years earlier by a thoracic surgeon from America. So I guess America helped, I guess. Number 33. Speaking of cool Germanic inventions, the sportswear company Adidas was founded by a Bavarian fellow by the name of Adolf Adi Dassler, which is why the company is called Adidas, not Adidas America, okay? Adidas. Number 34. Brace yourself, guys, because gummy bears were invented in Germany. Yes, a German person created the gummy bear in 1922, which means the popular Ursine snack is almost 100 German years old. Number 35. In 2009, the oldest known musical instrument ever found was discovered in southwestern Germany. The instruments, which are simple flutes carved from bone and ivory, date back to at least 35,000 years ago. Number 36. The first book in Europe to be printed using mass-produced movable metal type, rather than the boorishly scrawled out by hand, was the good book. No, not the Kama Sutra. The Bible. And it just so happens it was printed in Germany. Less than 200 copies of the book, now known as the Gutenberg Bible, were produced in the early 1450s. Only a few were still known to exist throughout the world. Number 37. Germany was also home to the very first magazine, which was launched in Hamburg in 1663. A Baulish Monarch's Dungen, which roughly translates to edifying monthly discussions, was the world's first regularly appearing publication. These days, magazines have much snappier titles like Nuts. Number 38. Germany is known by the principal originators of the now popular fairy tales found in the works of the Brothers Grimm. The two brothers popularized a wide variety of traditional European fairy tales such as Sleeping Beauty, Rapunzel, and Snow White. Number 39. Speaking of fairy tales, the Sleeping Beauty castle at Disneyland is inspired by a famous German castle called Neuschwanstein, which is located near the town of Fussen in Bavaria. The palace's name translates to New Swanstone Castle and was commissioned by King Ludwig II of Bavaria. King Ludwig was also known as the Swan King, but it's not an actual swan, which is disappointing, and is also thought to have inspired the opera Swan Lake. Number 40. Fun fact about Bavaria for you, this ancient southern region of Germany was the first area in Europe to be precisely measured. Before then, Bavaria was just kind of large, I guess. Number 41. The German state of Bremen exists in the form of two separate city enclaves located within the far larger German state of West Saxony. The largest of these two enclaves is also just called Bremen, while the other one is known as Bremerhaven. Der Sinn des Lebens German is the most widely spoken native language in the European Union. Though the vast majority of native German speakers are, shocker, German, German is an official language in a number of other nations, such as Austria, Switzerland, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Liechtenstein. Number 43. Funnily enough, Germany's capital is relocated no less than seven times. The cities of Aachen, Regensburg, Frankfurt am Main, Nuremberg, Weimar and Bonn have all hosted the nation's capital at some point or another. Berlin, Germany's current capital, has been the capital on two separate occasions. Number 44. Modern Berlin is only 27 years old. The city is believed to have been founded all the way back in 1237, but the city as it exists today was born with the fall of the Berlin Wall, which rhymes, loads, <laughs> in 1989. Yep, not only is Berlin full of millennials, it is a millennial. Number 47. 5. Number 45. Another interesting fact about Berlin is that it's actually huge! So huge, in fact, that it's a hefty 890 kilometers squared, which is roughly nine times bigger than Paris. That being said, it's still much smaller than London, which seductively spreads itself over 1,572 kilometers squared. Number 46. Berlin is also home to the Zoologische Garten Berlin, which is the largest zoo on the face of the planet. Germany as a whole boasts more than 400 zoos, as well as hundreds of other zoological gardens, wildlife parks, aquariums, bird parks, animal reserves, and safari parks. Number 47. With roughly 960 constructed pathways for getting over things, Berlin has more bridges than Venice. Which is saying something because canals and bridges are like Venice's thing. Berlin also contains almost 60 kilometers squared of water, consisting of lakes and around 180 kilometers of navigable waterways. Hmm, moist. Number 48. Ever had a headache and wanted to not have a headache? Have you ever used drugs to facilitate this somehow? Well, get on your knees and think of England. I mean, sorry, that's something else. Get on your knees and thank Germany, which is where aspirin was officially created in 1899.
Number 49. Berlin will soon be home to a one-of-a-kind building in the form of the House of One, a communal place of worship which will include a church, a mosque, and a synagogue all in one. You can pray at all of them. Make a, make a day of it. Number 50. When the American president John F. Kennedy visited Berlin in 1963, he infamously said, Ich bin ein Berliner, which, despite having an obvious intended meaning of I am a Berliner, also translates to I am a jam donut. Number 51. There's a town called Busingen am Hockheen, commonly known as Busingen, which is a German town entirely surrounded by territory belonging to Switzerland. Since the early 19th century, it's been physically separated from the rest of Germany by a narrow strip of land that contains the Swiss village of Dorflingen. At its narrowest point, this strip of Switzerland separates Busingen from the rest of the German state of Baden-Württemberg by only 700 meters. Number 52. Motorists are only allowed to stop on the German Autobahn for emergencies, and running out of gas is not considered an emergency. Therefore, it is actually illegal to run out of fuel in the legendary motorway. Drivers can be fined and have their licenses suspended for up to six months for this offense. Number 53. Surprisingly, roughly two-thirds of the German Autobahn has no speed limit for certain classes of vehicles. That being said, going faster than the advisory speed limit of 130 km per hour, known as the, oh jeez, this is going to be difficult to say, Rischgeschwindigkeit, can incur increased liability in the case of an accident. Damn you, Rischgeschwindigkeit. Damn you to hell. Number 54. Germany is also home to Europe's largest ring road, known as the Berliner Ring, which, at a total length of 196 kilometers, is roughly 8 kilometers longer than the London M25 motorway. Hmm, show offs, not all about length. Number 55. According to a German law, the state actually has a say on what German parents can name their Teutonic tots. German names must denote a gender, and surnames cannot be used as first names. Sucks to be you, Clark Gregg, actor who plays Agent Coulson in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which we recently made a video about, which is why I specifically remember the name. Sucks to be you, Clark Gregg. Number 56. You may be surprised to know that in Germany, escaping from prison is not punishable by law. German law holds that the desire to be free is a basic human instinct, and therefore prisoners have the right to escape. However, prisoners are held liable for any property damage or harm caused to other people as a result of their breakout, so in reality, escapes usually do incur some form of punishment. Number 57. Okay, Brits and Americans, you may want to sit down for this one. University is completely free in Germany. Tuition fees were abolished in 2014 as having to pay for higher education was considered socially unjust. Meanwhile, our governments are perfectly happy to saddle teenagers with mountains of debt. However, don't despair. University is free in Germany even for international students, so all you have to do is move to another country, which is super easy for us Brits, because the UK is part of the European Union. Oh, god damn it, I forgot. Number 58. Germany is home to over 1,000 different kinds of sausage. Right, well now I absolutely have to move to Germany. What's a German for I want your German sausage? I'm sure that won't be misinterpreted. Number 59. Germany also created Currywurst. Slices of German sausage served with spicy sauce and chips, and the recipe has become somewhat of a modern classic of German cuisine. Over 800 million currywurst are eaten in Germany every year, which makes sense because it sounds lovely, although that spicy sausage might hurt my mouth. It's not good with hot stuff. Number 60. It sounds so good to people, in fact, there's even a museum in Berlin dedicated to the popular snack. The Deutsches Currywurst Museum was opened in 2009 to mark the 60th anniversary of the dish's creation and welcomes around 350,000 sausage lovers each year. Number 61. There's also a notable sausage restaurant in Regensburg called the Regensburg Sausage Kitchen. Man, the Germans aren't the most creative thing namers, are they? However, despite its underwhelming title, the restaurant has an impressive claim to fame, as it's been in business continuously for almost 900 years, making it one of the oldest restaurants on the face of the planet. Number 62. Speaking of super old things, the Weyern Stefan Brewery in Freising, southern Germany, has been in continuous operation since the year 1040, making it almost an entire millennium old. Number 63. Germany also happens to be the only country in which the McRib is available at McDonald's all year round. Those lucky, lucky bastards. Nintendo 64. One of Germany's most well-known folk festivals is Munich's Oktoberfest. Famous as a huge event for the celebration of and copious consumption of beer. The event officially dates back to 1810, when Crown Prince Ludwig threw himself a knees up to celebrate his wedding to Princess Therese. Despite the name, Oktoberfest actually starts in the last week of September, though it does finish in October. Number 65. 
Oktoberfest is the world's largest festival of its kind. Some estimates put the amount of beer consumed at the event at a whopping 1.8 million gallons, or roughly 8.2 million litres. People who pass out drunk at Oktoberfest are referred to as Bierlichen, which means beer corpses. Ooh, how macabre. Number 66. Germany is one of several countries, with others including France, Austria, Spain and the Netherlands. That's a terrible fact. Oh wait, there's more. Where you can buy beer at McDonald's. Thinking about it, a happy meal and a pint sounds pretty immense right now. I know where I'm taking Jennifer Lawrence for our anniversary. Number, 76, 60, number 67. Germans also like to take their bread seriously. There are over 300 varieties of bread to be found in Germany, each one more bready than the last. I can't actually prove that, by the way. I just, I just liked saying it. Number 68. If you hadn't figured it out before, hamburgers, the delicious construction of meat and bread, got their name from the city of Hamburg, where they were created. Incidentally, the people of Hamburg are also known as hamburgers, which is just nice to know, but I'm sure they're just as delicious. Number 69. Spicy first sausage. Germany is also attempting to become as environmentally friendly as possible, with a goal of abandoning fossil fuels entirely by 2050 and generating all its electricity from renewable energy sources. Currently, about a third of Germany does so, which is yeah, it's very impressive, actually. Number 70. To that end, Germany is also slowly closing all of its nuclear power plants and hopes to have gotten rid of all of them by 2022. Number 71. Continuing its status as a potentially utopian, environmentally friendly paradise, Germany consistently ranks highly in terms of recycling rates. Its competition often comes in the form of Switzerland and Austria. Must be something about speaking German, which makes you want to save the planet from its near inevitable decline into a polluted wasteland. <laughs> Number 72. Germany has won the Football World Cup an impressive four times. Interestingly, however, its most recent 2014 win in Brazil was the first time as a united country. The three previous titles were won by West Germany. Number 73. Speaking of Germany winning the World Cup in 2014, some of you may remember that this particular World Cup included a record-breaking football match against Brazil, in which Germany humiliated the South Americans, who are often considered the best in the world, or so Football Daily tell me, by crushing them 7-1. Germany went 5-0 up within the first half hour, and by full time had dealt Brazil the biggest World Cup defeat in the nation's history. It really was something to behold, actually. Total and utter decimation. Did I mention the competition that year was held in Brazil? It was just, I mean, my god. Number 74. Interestingly, which kind of depends on how you define interesting, Germany is the world's capital of, you know, enlargement. With roughly 8 in every 100,000 men in the country opting to have their German sausage supersized. Number 75. Due to the effect of the Chernobyl disaster, which occurred in 1986, some of Germany's woodland areas are populated with radioactive wild boars. Number 76. In order to prevent the escape of elderly Germans suffering from dementia, a number of nursing homes in Germany have erected <laughs> fake bus stops outside their buildings to lure residents who try to go AWOL. Number 77. In order to combat anti-Semitism in modern-day Germany, a Jewish community outreach group created a service boldly titled rent a jew Spokesperson Masha Schmerling said that by sending ordinary Jewish people into German schools and universities, people will see that Jews are completely normal people who don't want to be defined purely by history. Number 78. The world's tallest cathedral is currently located in the southern German city of Ulm, and is known as Ulmminster. When I say the world's tallest cathedral is located in Ulm, I don't mean Ulmminster is on wheels, that'd be ridiculous. The, the church, which measures up an impressive 530 feet, is due to be overtaken by the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, which, when completed in the next few years, will stand at 172.5 metres tall, beating Ulmminster by over 10 metres. Number 79. Cologne Cathedral, unsurprisingly located in the German city of Cologne, was built over a period of 700 years. It can hold around 40,000 people and was the highest building in the world between 1880 and 1884, the year in which the highly erotic Washington Monument was completed. Number 80. The German Parliament building has an interesting feature in the form of a glass dome that allows members of the public to look down on parliamentary proceedings. This symbolises that the German people are above the government, and that the government should always remain transparent. Ah, oh, I see, very clever. Number 81. Angela Merkel has been the Chancellor of Germany since 2005, and has become such a symbol for powerful women that Barbie has even produced an Angela Merkel doll. Number 82. A dubious assertion from middle-aged German folklore claims that a person can cure themselves from toothache by kissing a donkey. Exactly where on the donkey is never specified, but I don't want to go near an ass with my lips. Number 83. Speaking of folklore, the tradition of the Easter Bunny originated among German Lutherians, 
One legend holds that the Easter Bunny was once a bird. It was then transformed into a rabbit, but retained the ability to lay eggs. Number 84. Additionally, the tradition of sticking a tree in your living room to mark the birth of Jesus, aka the Christmas tree tradition, actually originated in Germany. Number 85. The term Kris Kringle as an alternative name for Santa comes from the German word Christkindl, which literally means Christ child. This is because in Germany, it's baby Jesus who brings everyone presents, not some chubby dude in a red suit. Frankly, I prefer the chubby dude, less judgmental than maybe Jesus. Number 86. The German town of Gangenbach likes to bring the Christmas cheer in the form of the world's largest advent calendar. Gangenbach's 18th century town hall, or Rathaus, has 24 windows, the equivalent to the number of windows on an advent calendar. Except these windows have government workers behind them, not chocolate. Number 87. Another truly bizarre German tradition, this time part of the nation's New Year celebration, involves watching the 1963 comedy sketch Dinner for One. If you've never heard of that sketch, you're not alone. Most British people have never heard of Dinner for Two, but watching the 11 minute sketch has become an important part of German New Year celebrations. Number 88. In Germany, Father's Day is celebrated in a uniquely German fashion. Groups of men go hiking with one or several hand-drawn wagons filled with wine, beer and traditional regional food. Predictably, this results in a large amount of drunk German dudes, such that alcohol-related traffic accidents sometimes treble on Father's Day in Germany. Number 89. Germany also boasts, although I'm not sure how much of a boast this actually is, the world's narrowest street, which can be found in the southern city of Rutlingen. The street is called Sprauer Hofstrasse, and at its narrowest point measures only 31 centimeters wide. Number 90. There are a number of places in Germany with names that are apparently perfectly unremarkable in German, but a touch more interesting in English. There's a town on the Rhine River in the state of Hesse called Asmannhausen. <laughs> There's a village in Bavaria called Titting, <laughs> and a mountain in the Bavarian Alps called, and I swear to Angela Merkel I'm not making this up, Wank Mountain, which is also what my bedroom was called in my lonely teenage years. Number 91. In German weddings, there's a tradition in which the bride is sometimes kidnapped by her friends before the wedding, leaving the groom to hunt for her as she's taken on a pub crawl by various different taverns. Didn't that happen in the office? I'm pretty sure that happened in the office. Number 92. Apparently, and I have no idea who conducted this research or why, only 71% of German men stand to urinate. Just under a third of German men sit down to have a wee. Bizarrely, the Germans even have specific words to describe one's urination stance. Those who stand are called Stipinkler, and those who sit are known as Sitzpinkler. Number 93. Another bizarre, almost sickening fact about the Germans is that their pillows are not rectangular, as God willed it at the moment of creation, but they are square. That's almost as bad as Canada and their bagged milk. Ugh, almost. Oh, you didn't know that Canadians store their milk in bags? Well, you can learn about that in 101 Facts About Canada. But don't say I didn't warn you, it's disgusting. Number 94. Interestingly and somewhat bizarrely, when Germans discuss the time, they count the minutes to the next hour rather than after. This means if you ask a German the time and are told, for example, Holb Drei, which literally means half three, the time is actually half past two, or half two in English. Number 95. The Germans can also lay claim to one of the most enjoyable actors of his generation, Peter Dinklage, who is widely known for playing Tyrion Lannister on the medieval fantasy television series Game of Thrones. Dinklage is actually related to the Westphalian noble family, von Dinklage, who changed their names during World War II. Number 96. The national animal of Germany is the Golden Eagle, which it shares as a mascot with four other nations, Albania, Austria, Mexico, and Kazakhstan. This makes the Golden Eagle the world's most common national animal. Number 97. Depending on your personal level of prudishness, you may or may not be shocked to learn that prostitution is legal in Germany. In fact, prostitution is so legal in Germany that the government actually funds visits to specialist sex workers for disabled citizens. There's even training centers where German prostitutes can get a diploma in qualified sexual accompaniment and assistance for disabled people. Hey, and why shouldn't there be? Number 98. Feels a bit weird to go from that to this, but on the very first day of school, every German child receives a giant cone filled with sweets and toys, called a Schultute. This tradition dates all the way back to the 1800s, and these days, some particularly sport German sprogs even receive video games and cell phones in their cones too. This tradition is also observed in Austria, as well as certain areas of Switzerland, Poland, and the Czech Republic. Number 99. Annoyingly for Germans, just over 60% of YouTube's top 1,000 videos have been blocked on the German version of the site. The reasons for this are not entirely certain, but many people point to the German performance rights organization GEMA and copyright claims. 
Sucks to be you, German tubers, although I hope you can see this. Number 100! The longest word ever published in the German language is... Oh my god. Re really? I can't say this? Let me give it a go. Okay, here we go. Ready? The word is 79 letters long, and in English translates to Association for Subordinate Officials of the Head of Office Management of the Danube Steamboat Electrical Services. Huh. How can such an interesting word describe something so utterly boring? Number 101! It is a common yet entirely unobstantiated belief in Germany that one can become sick from fresh air blowing through an open window. Many Germans literally believe that draft can cause colds, the flu, pneumonia, and even clogged arteries. Which, by the way, I'm happy to report to any superstitious Germans out there, is complete and utter b****. b means nonsense, by the way. But do you know what wasn't b****? This video it was great, wasn't it? Did you have a good time? Give this video a like and comment below what was your favourite, and also comment below what you want to see next, because otherwise, how do I know what you want? What, do you want me to have it tattooed to my arm? It's not possible, can't do it. But anyway, watch these other two videos. I know you're really gonna dig them, and hey, maybe you'll get them tattooed to your arm. I don't know why I'm obsessed with tattoos. Weird. Anyway, bye!